Hey everyone, welcome to Neil Talks. My name's Neil and it's time to talk Taskmaster Australia. And I gotta say, the production company that's making both of the uh, Southern Hemisphere versions of this show, New Zealand and Australia, they know what they're doing at this point. They they understand the format, they've got a great location, they've found really good taskmasters and assistants, they create really smart, fun, entertaining tasks, and they find really good cast for these shows as well. There's really not much to complain about. Uh, even though we're only halfway through the first season, it really feels like the show hit the ground running. It doesn't hurt to have three series of New Zealand under your belt before you jump into the first season of Australia. But yeah, it it, it just seems to be working. And I can only imagine that it's doing well in Australia. I'd love to know what the ratings are like. Is it is it a hit? Is it successful? Does it look like it'll come back for future years? Because I hope it does. Uh, I I don't see why a show like this couldn't be successful and stick around for, you know, the better part of the decade if everyone was interested in keeping it going that long. But yeah, hey, how cool is that? That that's even on the table already, and we're only at episode five. Before we jump into this episode, let me just thank all of you for doing the the algorithm things that YouTube seems to enjoy that really help the channel out. Thanks for leaving all your comments. I love hearing your thoughts on these shows. You don't have to agree with me. I'd love to hear dissenting opinions. Um, it's a show that makes you think. It's a show that's fun. We can think different things. It's all cool. Be sure to stick around after my reaction, guys, because I go into an in-depth dive into all the tasks, my thoughts on scoring and uh, design and whatever comes to mind, but it's often a, a big old discussion. Love to hear your thoughts on that. Um, I see the, the graphs of when you guys are watching and too many of you are leaving the second the show ends. Um, stick around for my comments afterwards. I you may be disappointed, I can't promise you won't, but give it a shot at least. That's all I ask. Anyway, <laughs> let's, uh, let's check out the latest episode. This is episode five, and uh, I'm ready to jump into it. Here we go. Are you okay? By my side, as always, is a man who does need an introduction. <laughs> Easily one of the top two Toms in my inner circle. It's my honest assistant, Tom Cashman. G'day, mate. Does Tom always wear the same button-down shirt? Tonight, our contestants have been asked to bring in the most pretentious thing. The most pretentious thing? Okay. This should be this interesting. Highbrow group of coastal elites. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's start with Nina. I brought in a gay toilet door. <laughs> it's actually one of the original toilet doors from one of the first um, gay nightclubs in King's Cross. So it's part of queer Australian history. Actually, round of applause for this great <laughs> door. That explanation was very pretentious and even the wanting a round of applause at the end for your own validation. <laughs> <laughs> Super <laughs> pretentious. <laughs> Uh, I also brought in a gay door, no. <laughs> I spent four grand <laughs> to get a replica proton pack from the first Ghostbusters movie. Hasbro selling those for 300. I didn't bring it, I just brought a backpack that looks like it. <laughs> Why is this pretentious? To be fair, I didn't look up the definition of pretentious. <laughs> I just wanted to claim the backpack on tax, so... I brought in my HSC results. <laughs> if you're pretentious, I'm guessing you're showing off that you did yes. really well. Actually, I got 198 out of 500. Oh. oh. <laughs> Not... Brag about how low I did in the HSC. Cos I feel like I did heaps better than everyone else in life. <laughs> Bitchy, maybe. I'm not sure it's pretentious. Maybe knowing the meanings of words isn't your specialty. Yeah. I, I got really confused and booked my schoolies week before the exams. <laughs> now you're down with the people again. Oh, you're not. You're supposed, to be, you're supposed to be above. Rolling them. around in the mud. My collection of vinyl records. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do not own a record player. <laughs> yeah. On my shelf, they look stunning. It's making me kind of hate you, so... It's working. It's a good job. Yeah. 
I've bought in a prayer candle of myself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on. Is this you in the craft again? Listen, when you've got a sticker printer at home, you take advantage of it. Uh, your door piece, it's ultimately just a toilet door, but you talked about it with such passion and detail <laughs> that it was really getting on my tits. So, <laughs> four points to you. But the most pretentious records just because they look good and you don't even listen to them, Jimmy with five. Yeah, yeah, that's an easy win for Jimmy. OK, we're popcorning. Okay, clearly Luke has a, a Ghostbusters thing because A, the proton pack, but B, his competition costume. Protect the popcorn with an impenetrable fort. In 10 minutes, Tom will try to eat the popcorn. You may not move the popcorn. You may not personally attack Tom. The longest uneaten popcorn wins. Okay. Without physically attacking me. All right. A key detail. <laughs> Uh-oh. There's disqualifications coming. Can I just put it in the toilet? Oh, I've already moved the popcorn. Oh, no, you may oh, not move more popcorn. disqualifications. No. Okay, so you can't hide it. It has to stay where it is. So all you can do is build things around it. Okay. Impenetrable uh, fort. Oh, that that does nothing. No, you need to you need to go heavy duty here. Okay, someone's getting ready for battle. That's okay, just one. Yeah, that'll do. How many minutes until Tom? Comes? What what on earth is Danielle thinking here? Anything, just stuff is going to be in the way. I mean, it just feels like effort. physical attack. This is doing nothing. He's just going to come in and, and take it. <laughs> okay. Oh no, okay. I'll, I don't want to hurt you. Yeah. I feel like some popcorn. I'm not allowed to attack you. Yeah. No! Yeah. On! Yeah. Like, what was Jimmy thinking? They get everything off a bookshelf, put a bookshelf on top. In hindsight, what I should have done is just put the bookshelves there. There's more than one doorway, though, isn't there? Yeah. Would have you still had enough bookshelves to cover every doorway? Yeah, yeah. It would have made just as much sense as your poor effort. <laughs> Danielle? Mm-hmm? I feel like... I didn't attack him. Okay. If you're going to relocate an animal for its own safety... <laughs> <laughs> Like a feral pig. <laughs> she had me for two minutes and 38 seconds up against the chair. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but is it a DQ? You could say that there are two rules here and you broke both of them. How quickly did you get to Jimmy's popcorn? 13 you seconds. Don't have to say. <laughs> 13 seconds. It doesn't say like including the buckets. This is going to be smart. Is this for reasons to be is this seen allowed? later. No one's stopping me. You know, that's the problem. You you can't move it, can you? Yeah, I feel like this is a, a total misread. Interesting. We, oh, sorry, excuse me, that was... Um, don't eat that one, it was on the floor. That's not popcorn, that's a piece of nutrient. That was popcorn. Thanks, Nina. Oh, Lesser Tom, can you just read I need to read, again? read, yeah, let's read this clap, so read this task. In one more time. You may not move the popcorn. Okay. Yeah. And you may not personally attack Tom. Okay. What the f*** am I going to do with you now? <laughs> <laughs> so Jimmy's got like at least three points at this point. Because I feel like Nina and Danielle are both DQ'd. She still took longer than Jimmy. 14 seconds. <laughs> 14 seconds. <laughs> I was fond of both of them before we filmed this. It's Julia oh, no. and Luke. Personal attacks. You want to eat the popcorn? <laughs> manja, manja, bites. That is pretty revolting. Oh, okay, we're, bo we're both wetting it down. Oh! I'm not going to scratch my bum and then put my finger in there, am I? That's too far. I can feel it's too far. Let me get up for a second. So now I feel like there's a fecal count in there. My tongue! But that's toilet water on the popcorn. Mmm, I think I'm, I'm good. You're okay? <laughs> so My mind would never go yourself. there. You just sort of naturally have a bit of a stress sweat coming from that area anyway. <laughs> Can we edit this bit out or...? <laughs> <laughs> Julie, I feel like this was a bit beneath your standards. Here's the thing, uh, nothing is beneath my standards. Rolling around in the dirt. Is he even... That means that Julia and Luke don't have a time. You could argue, therefore, they tie. Danielle's an easy disqualification. Yeah. What the? Nina, 
I mean, shit, mate. <laughs> <laughs> You're gone. So I think it's five for Luke and Julia and two for Jimmy. Oh, only two. They, they knocked him down a, a, a place. Okay. Evidence markers? What, what is this all about? 26 roses. 26 is alphabet. Hi, Danielle. Oh. I'm intrigued. Whoa. Pick up all 26 flowers and deliver them to Tom's vase. Vase. You may only advance to collect the next flower when you correctly guess that flower's password. Each password's going to start with the next letter in the Fewest alphabet. Total attempts to guess a password wins. It's just about guessing the number of passwords. Okay, there's 26. So it... Fewest guesses wins. Simple. All right. So does any A word count for the first one? Is the password password? I will accept that password. Yes. Because it has an A flower. in it? Sunshine. Happy. Nina oh. is a cool dude. I don't know why this is going so well. Bouquet. Vase. Pen. No. Oh. Echo. Bouquet. I will accept that password. Are there rules? No. Christmas. Santa. Jesus. I will accept that password. Oh my god, it's alphabetical order. Okay, password, vegan. No. But... Okay, so do you just have to be further along alphabetically? You just have to put... Cola, wattle, gown, mini, zipper. I will accept that password. Uh-oh. I just got it. What about xylophone? No. Nope. Oh, that's... That is that theory? You gotta go something <laughs> after zipper. Zoom. I will accept that password. What? Zoom, but now you gotta go after Zoom. I think it is alphabet related, but the problem is I can't remember which letters have been said or not. I don't think it's uh, two. Okay, so you just have to do one from every question. So it's gonna be easy starting. Victory lap, whoop, 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 lap, whoop. Not her, she's yeah, manic. Effort. I'm not just gonna guess through the alphabet, that's gonna bore us both. Is it X, Y, Z? I'll accept that password. Quirky. I will accept that password. Okay, they both figured it out, but how many guesses are we talking about here? Hundreds. Once you'd used uh, a, a word that started with one letter of the alphabet, you couldn't say another password that started with that same letter. Okay, so my, my tactic would have totally worked if you just start with an A and then a B and then a C. Did you end up working out what was going on? You did, Nina. Did you, Julia, by the end? When I first saw 26, I'm like, well, that's alphabet. When I realised they weren't in order, it did not even vaguely occur to me that it was still alphabet, just not in that order. 198 out of 500. Nina made 159 guesses. <laughs> no idea whether that's good or bad. Uh, Julia, you, you guessed the C word four different times. <laughs> <laughs> Julia made 340 guesses. Yeah. After deciding it would be too boring to go through the alphabet, Julia made 87 more guesses. <laughs> okay, awesome. Uh, who's going to figure this out? I think Danielle could be all over this one. Is the password Rose? Terminator 2. The Matrix Reloaded? No. Uh, the Matrix Resurrection? No. Okay, the first Matrix, the original Matrix. No. Okay, the Matrix, the video game, uh, the path of Neo. No. Frogs. I will accept that password. Okay, okay, is this the Matrix? How old are you? Flower. Now there's a pattern and I can't remember what I've done. Xbox Series X. Because I don't realise what the pattern is still, but it's probably glaringly obvious for everyone who's playing along at home. Sunburn. Sunscreen. Bananas. The Matrix. <laughs> What's the password, Tom? Do you even want these flowers? Ah! <laughs> Get you the password in your mind. Okay. Is that the password? I mean, yeah, but... Yes! <laughs> Danielle's going to figure this out. Word beginning with D. No. A word beginning with E. I will accept that password. <laughs> T U D. No. 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 W. No. X. I'll accept that password. Zebras are cool. I will accept that password. Please proceed to the vase. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one, isn't it? See, see, buddy. 
Okay, I don't think either of them beat Nina. And if they just tried out various variations on the Matrix movies, <laughs> they might get straight in there. If they added 69, they'd be straight through. <laughs> <laughs> How many did he do? Matrix Blueprint, Reloaded 69. 89 guesses. Yeah. 17 of which related to the Matrix. <laughs> you turned into a toddler to the point where you had a tantrum and lied down. <laughs> <laughs> Was it hard for you, Tom, watching us all just completely f up? It was my favourite task. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy made 323 guesses. <laughs> really, what the task was about was delivering 26 roses into the vase. Right. I think they all oh, did that, didn't Who did You might want to see something. Oh, oh no. Gosh. Okay, who did? The Legend of Korra, which is the one after Avatar. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. See, see you, buddy. Oh. No littering. Oh, Luke. Mm -hmm. In my defense, Two dozen roses. I have hay fever. <laughs> <laughs> they were plastic roses. Tom Gleason is a mongoose, koi fish, fungus, lily pad, Ulysses butterfly, roses, Jupiter, human, budgerigo? No. Oh, I can't tell if there's any connection between all of the things. Pure luck at this point. Oh, what the hell? Okay. Oh, she's just stalled out three from the end. Shrimp, krill, A B C D E F G H I J H I J. No. Subaru. No. Chrysalis. No. Oh my God. Taika Waititi. Uranus. Venus. I'll accept that password. The order doesn't matter. The order doesn't matter. What is this? Mochaccino. Nina wins. I'll just read you what I've got here. Yep. Ah, uh, bong along along, come along, dad, EPSQ, fungus, Tom, Ulysses, Venus, wrench, and yabby. But I've said other things that are alive. <laughs> is this going to be so obvious? And I'm going to freaking kick my Oh, Danielle, I had such high hopes for you. I don't understand. Two more out of 26 to go. Two more out of 26 to go. <laughs> oh no, I think I've just told oh, no. Yeah. Two hours in. I have no idea what ones I've got into xylophone. I will accept that password. <laughs> Never! I will accept that password. <laughs> what the hell? What the freaking hell, dude? <laughs> Thanks, Danielle. Oh, oh boy. Did she break a thousand? <laughs> Ten guesses a minute for two hours. That's over a thousand guesses. It's gotta be. I'm it's, crying it, it, again. <laughs> Even though it's not Are You Okay Day, I feel like I have to ask you, are you okay? <laughs> no, that genuinely broke my brain. <laughs> that was the worst thing that's ever happened to me in my whole life. <laughs> and uh, after all that, you dropped a rose. I did? No, you didn't. <laughs> but how many guesses was it? 503. That's it? Wow. I was thinking when I heard Julia's, I was like, maybe I won't come last. <laughs> I think Luke McGregor's an easy disqualify. Danielle with two somehow. <laughs> Julia with three. Jimmy with four. And the winner of the task is Nina with five points. Yeah. A hundred something is suddenly like really impressive. But I'm b frankly blown away. Danielle only guessed 500 times. Okay, it's giraffe centric. And there's pink bathrobes. I have no idea what's going on. Oh, okay. Yay! Hi, John. Oh, I hope they do better than the last time they were a team. Get the giraffe in the bath. If you touch grass, or the giraffe touches grass, or you touch the giraffe, you must start again. Faster swims. Okay, so you can't touch the grass. The giraffe can't touch the grass, and you can't touch the giraffe? Could we attach these to our feet and use them as shoes instead of doing that? That's a way better idea. That's much a better idea. And then use the, the rolling rack. Oh my gosh, you're faster than a rat up a drain pipe, doll. <laughs> right. Faster than a rat up a drain pipe. If any of those three things happen, they have to go back to the beginning. There may be some resets here, I think. So we can't touch the giraffe? And the nope. giraffe can't touch grass. No. Yes, well, he shouldn't. No. He doesn't have the mental capacity. You can't touch the giraffe. 
We can't touch him. No. Yeah. Okay. So then, what do you we, think? We don't have to use these things. Babes, tell me. Tell you what. Yeah. I was pretty sure this is where my career was headed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. This is all right, they're doing all right. Better than this, mate. No. Highly. Have a lovely bath, babe. <laughs> oh, okay. Bath, bath. Oh yeah, they have to dance after every group task. <laughs> and still no points. Uh, now, Julia, do you agree that you thrive most when you're paired with someone competent? <laughs> yeah, I had a very strong idea that um, Danielle had a lot of better ideas than me, so that just seemed like the... She hadn't seen me do the other tasks. <laughs> I thought maybe she'd been given a task to sabotage sometime. <laughs> Danielle and Julia took eight minutes and one second. Ooh. Okay. That isn't... Okay. That's beatable, but I have a funny feeling the other three are going to misinterpret the rules. If I were to guess. Put the giraffe on this, tie this to the bike, and somebody rides the bike and drags this across. That's a fantastic idea. Oh, this is going to take way more than eight minutes. OK, off you go, mate. See you later. See you <laughs> Thank you, buddy. So I can't come back. That's right, we don't need you. I can. Yeah, but you can. Oh, it's like this. Nina has touched grass. No! Oh, no! Please return to the bar. Oh. We're coming. The giraffe has touched grass. Where? <laughs> oh, it's a dragging hoof. Did you I'll sorry. just wait for my boys to come back from you the just... giraffe. <laughs> 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 touch oh. grass with your hand. Oh, Please sake. return to the bar. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that's when Nia comes in, she stabilizes. Oh. Oh. Are we going to get this done in under an hour? Yeah. And we're in the bar. We're in the bar. <laughs> Holy shit. Great work, team. <laughs> Uh, Having more people is supposed to be an advantage. Nope. Couldn't have done it without You me. needed all three. I like the way that you say we needed all three people after you just watched two people do it. <laughs> I definitely had the thought, but I could just do this by myself. <laughs> I just want to say I never had that thought. 22 minutes and 42 seconds. I think Julia and Danielle both get five points. The uh, bad improv group gets two points, I think. Two points each. Yeah, but... How's Fair enough. Episode scoreboard looking? I'd have made it four and two. I'm not sure why, but... Nina, could you please read the task? Okay. Oh, it's another team task. As a team, use your own shadows to spell taskmaster. Oh. A letter will be captured every 10 seconds. <laughs> every team member must contribute to every letter. The best team taskmaster wins. You all have to participate in every letter. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's a... It's a it's a weak T. Hurry! Oh my god. <laughs> no one got the S. Oh! Okay, that's a good E. That's a good E. I don't. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, let, let's see each team's result before we judge. But I feel like no one knows how to make an S with two or three people. Oh, those S's are terrible. I'll be the, honest with the you, K I'm using the letters underneath it to read it. The K ain't great. <laughs> What's going on there in the second S? <laughs> the S's are terrible. The, the E... I don't know. The, the, the second R, I don't know what's going on. They're both terrible. Yeah. <laughs> but I found Julia and Danielle's teams slightly more amusing. Okay. They both get two. The bad improv troupe, they get one. <laughs> oh, okay. Yikes. So I think Danielle and Julia have won every team task up to this point. The winner of the episode is Julia Morris. <laughs> One ninety-eight out of five hundred. Literally nothing wrong with that episode. Just really strong start to finish. Um, maybe not the most memorable episode of all time, but but you can't poke any holes in it either. And it was entertaining as heck. And that's 
that's all you can ask for with a show like this. So yeah, let's let's go through it. Um, I'm listening to the seagulls, man. Most pretentious. I love it because I've never heard that category before, and I feel like I've heard almost everything. And this is this inspires a different set of thoughts than most prize tasks do. Jimmy was an easy win there, bringing in the record collection, especially because he doesn't have a record player. That's just so freaking pretentious. I love it. I, I think it's brilliant. Uh, <laughs> a, f a couple of people should have looked up the definition of pretentious before bringing in their prize, and I include uh, Luke's Proton Pack in that. I include Julia's High School Report Card. Because it's one thing if you bring in, like a stellar report card that, you know, makes you feel superior. Because really that's what pretension is all about. But but failing grades? Uh, no. No. Nina's art was definitely on the right track. But it was just a bathroom door. But I'm not, I, I am not the one to comment on art in my family. My brother is the curator. Um, no, he literally is. It's so pretentious of him. But it's also so pretentious of me to brag about him. First task. Put an impenetrable shield around this bucket of popcorn. You can't move the popcorn. You have to make it as difficult as possible for, for Tom, lesser Tom, to, to eat it. It never would have occurred to me to tamper with the popcorn itself, like drowning it, like both... Julia and Luke did. And kudos to both of them because they both won. I would have gone more on the, the Jimmy tactic, but I would have actually made things a little more difficult. And I feel like the way to make things more difficult, and, and the set dresser on the show would hate me for it, but if there's two big bookshelves in there, I would dump all the stuff off of both of them. And then I would put one open side down on top of the table so that the popcorn's caught between shelves. And then I'd put the second one open side up on top of it. And then I'd fill that with all the stuff that came out of the shelves. With an extra set of hands, one of the crew helping me with the bookshelves, I think I could pull that off in 10 minutes. And it, and is it impenetrable? No. But does it take some time to get through? Absolutely. But it would turn out I'd only get three points uh, if I had participated with this panel anyway, the same as Jimmy, who lasted all of 13 seconds. So that would have been a ton of wasted effort. One of the things I'm noticing on this particular series is there seems to be a high number of disqualifications. And it's not because Greater Tom is being particularly harsh with the rules or anything. He's just you know, here's the rules. If you broke them, you're disqualified. That that seems completely fair. I, it, it feels like a group of contestants who are having a hard time reading the rules and sticking to them because, you know, again, in this task, Danielle moves the popcorn. Not a lot, but she moves it before catching herself. And then she physically assaults Tom. Like, there were two rules and she broke them both. And then I don't know what Nina was trying to do. Nina's like transferring it to other containers, hiding it, um, putting the bucket in brief in suitcases, and but she didn't do a good enough job of putting all the popcorn away that she left some on the table and 14 seconds still disqualified. I like the task though, um, but yeah, I, I'm. What kind of personality is it that that? makes you think like Julia and Luke, where you're like, I'm just going to make this so disgusting that he won't want to eat it. Because my, my, my mind just doesn't go there. I don't know what that says about me. I don't know what it says about them. Would you have thought of that, guys? I don't know. The next task. I thought this might have been another one along the lines of let the cat out of the bag from a few episodes back. I think that was episode two. Um, but no, this was different, but, but there's 26 roses. And the first thing your mind should go to is 26 letters of the alphabet. It's like 
Taskmaster New Zealand Series 3, all the buckets on the rail with the ropes, and there were 26 buckets, and pull a rope and find the one with the duck, and that was the fourth bucket that corresponds with D for duck. So find a password that works. My, my first instinct would have been, since there's 26, the first password would have to start with A, but I didn't realize... I would have thought you'd have to guess a particular A word, which would be a challenge. But I would say an A word, and I would get it right. And then I'd say a B word, and I would get it right. And I'd start thinking, oh, I'm really lucky. And it, uh, probably by the time I get to like D or E, I'm like, oh, any word starting with this letter would work. So I would just work my way through alphabetically. I think. I think that's what I would do. And I think I would get this thing done in 26 tries, 26 guesses. I had such high hopes for Danielle. What, what I find interesting is no one started the task with any sort of strategy. Everyone just started by random guessing. And it's the kind of task which starts off really easy. It feels like you're just knocking it out of the park. Everything you say is right because the odds of saying something starting with the same letter that you've already tried, unless you know it's something related to the matrix, is quite low. So... So yeah, for the first 10 or 12, you're just like cruising along and you're feeling good about yourself and then you grind to a halt and you don't know why because you haven't approached it with any sort of strategy. But no one seemed to clue in that there were 26 off the top. And I don't know whether you could see, read the sign from the far end. Like, could you read the sign that said 26 next to Lesser Tom from the start point? Maybe not, but you could certainly ask them. I'd, I'd ask him. I feel like I'd crush this task, is my point. I had such high hopes for Danielle. But man, did she stall out with three to go. An hour and a half plus of guessing. And she only guessed 500 times, which, frankly, blows my mind. 90 minutes. The, the, you know, you're, she's, she's guessed about once every 10 seconds. That feels like such a slow pace. I feel for Lesser Tom. You could see him like stretching it out. Like you, you could, you could tell he was like in pain just from standing on the concrete for that long. Um, but I love seeing the. I love seeing contestants melt down. I, I love, and it, and it wasn't just Danielle. It was Jimmy. Uh, it was Luke. I feel bad for Luke with the DQ because he didn't hang on to all his roses. But yeah, no one really figured out what was going on until late in the game and by then you've you've made so many wrong guesses that you can be really really stuck you know and then you get contestants like julia who like outright say they're not going to be boring and and work their way through things alphabetically and then they end up guessing another 80 plus things before figure before getting something right randomly i don't know Poor Danielle. Like, just watching it again made her cry all over again. And, and, and yeah, she's laughing, but it's also, like, I also feel like it, it, it did break her. And I wouldn't be surprised if she has nightmares or, you know, like, th that certain tasks haunt contestants afterwards. And I also fully believe Lesser Tom that this was his favorite task. Um, I, I would love adjudicating something like this especially when it's clear that the contestants don't know why their passwords are working or failing. Are they things that are, that are alive? I don't know. Crazy. Uh, and then we had two team tasks. We had get the giraffe in the bath. You can't touch the giraffe. You can't touch the, ba uh, the grass. The giraffe can't touch the grass. The team of three, I mean, the, the description of a bad improv troupe is so on the nose it's it's not even funny. I mean, they 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 really love each other. They've all just met, but they they've got a good vibe. They're 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 connected. They're they're best friends, but but no one's offering any any critical thinking at, at all. And they're overcomplicating. They're like, we'll put it on the rolling cart and we'll drag it behind a bicycle and we'll we'll make shoes out of the robes and you know just just get down to it, do some shuffling, and and bring it back. It's a little frustrating, and I, so far we've only seen four team tasks. But interestingly, only two of those were filmed at the house, 
And the other two were final tasks of the day in the theater. And they happen on the same days that the, the film's tasks are, are aired. So that makes me wonder if that's always going to be the case, that there's going to be an in-theater team task following every on-location team task. It's a fun idea. But I, I don't think the, the bad improv troupe's going to win a single one on location or in the theater all season. I think I think Julia and Danielle are a much better match. I think they have the advantage of being two. I think I think the team tasks always been interesting on Taskmaster because I'd love to see some see if somebody's done the analysis of this, but I feel like there's an advantage to being the team of two. I think a team of three is just there's a greater chance of bad interpersonal dynamics too many cooks syndrome, the, the potential for chaos is just amplified by an order of magnitude or more. And, and, and with two, you can just sort of get down to it and focus on the task, get it done. The, the odds of success seem much higher. So I'd love to know, you know, if the team of two has historically done much better than the team of three across all seasons and formats. Let me know if there, if that's out there. There's there's probably a Taskmaster wiki out there or something, isn't there? That I could deep dive into. And then the final team task is doing shadow puppets of the letters in Taskmaster. And again, easier to do, I think, if you're the team of two. Uh, S's are hard. S's are hard by yourself. I think they're even harder in a group of three. I don't even know how you would do it. Because you would have to have, like, you can put one person down at the bottom and they can sort of put themselves in a V sort of shape at the bottom to be the bottom half of the bottom curve. And then you can have someone else standing, leaning back, doing their hands overhead. Um, but then how do you, where does the third person, does the third person sit on the shoulders of the middle person and lean way over, forward, or I don't know. T's and E's and A's and M's, those are easy. The K shouldn't be hard, but it seems to be very hard for for both teams. R shouldn't have been particularly hard either, but again, I think it's easier if you're just two. The, the coordination of three people versus two is just a bigger challenge, especially when you're like on a tight time limit, like, okay, 10 seconds to figure out the next letter. But it's a fun it's a fun idea, and it's it's hard to it's hard to argue with Greater Tom's scoring. I think he's doing a really good job of like you don't always necessarily fully agree with his order and that sort of thing, but but he always explains it. You 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 never go oh that's egregiously wrong. Yeah, I think he's I think he's doing a really stand up job of being an excellent taskmaster. I really like Lesser Tom as the the assistant. What I like about him is it looks like he's having fun during the tasks. Um, it's a very different vibe from, from Alex. Um, Alex is very, very serious. It's, a, it's super fun when Alex breaks and he, and he starts laughing uh, even though he's been trying to hold it in. A lot of fun, don't get me wrong. But I like that not everyone tries to emulate that. I like that... Lesser Tom has fun. I like that he's he offers out a few more um, suggestions. Maybe is the wrong word, but he does sort of hint at things, and he and he he cracks jokes. And um, you know, when somebody has been guessing passwords wrong for an hour and a half, he starts throwing down some heavy hints that there are twenty six clues and you've missed two, and here's all the ones you've already said and. Yeah, you can tell he's having fun because he's smiling a lot. Uh, I'm, I'm all for it. I just wish he had a, had different taste in shirts because that that white button down with the the wooden uh, buttons not a good look, especially with the button up collar and, and no tie. But anyway, I don't know. Maybe it's Australian fashion. Let me know. Is that is that big in in Australia? Anyway, another really fun episode. I'm enjoying this season thoroughly. I can't wait for next week. Uh, thank you for doing all of the fun algorithm things that YouTube rewards. It really does help out the channel when you do. And until next time, everybody. Take care. Stay healthy. We'll see you soon. Cheers.